They're always bugging us about something or other. Can you think of a specific example? Well, my boyfriend made me come here. Your boyfriend made you come here? He says um, I'm depressed much of the time. I'm sorry to hear that you're depressed. It's true. I am unhappy. Do you think coming here will help you not to be unhappy? What you've just seen is Eliza, a natural language processing program that could engage in conversations similarly to ChatGPT. But what is impressive about Eliza is that it was created in the 1960s, over half a decade before ChatGPT. Eliza was such a sophisticated program for the time that it was considered one of the earliest attempts at passing the Turing test, meaning for some people it was genuinely difficult to distinguish between talking to Eliza and an actual human being. This was 50 15 years before the personal computer became familiar to the general public and three decades before most people encountered attempts at natural language processing. It was the first program to illustrate how personal machines could become. This is the story of Eliza, the first digital therapist and chatbot ever. Joseph Weizenbaum created Eliza in the 1960s at MIT. Weizenbaum's stated aim was to explore the communication possibilities between humans and machines. Eliza was written in a language called Madslib, but most of its language abilities were written in separate scripts. One of its most famous scripts was called Doctor. The Doctor script created a conversational interaction somewhat similar to what might take place in the office of a psychotherapist in an initial psychiatric interview. The way Eliza itself worked was by examining the text it received for keywords. It would then apply values to said keywords and transform the input into an output. The scripts that Eliza ran determined the keywords, set the values of the keywords, and set the values of transformation for the output in the doctor program. Weizenbaum chose to make the doctor script in the context of psychotherapy to sidestep the problem of having to give the program a database of real-world knowledge from which it could draw contextual responses. Instead, Weizenbaum opted for a script that reflected the patient's statements to carry the conversation forward. The result was a somewhat intelligent seeming response that repeatedly deceived some early users of the program. Some of Eliza's responses were so convincing that Weizenbaum and several others have anecdotes of users becoming emotionally attached to the program, occasionally forgetting that they were conversing with the computer. One of the most famous cases was with Weizenbaum's own secretary, who on one occasion asked Weizenbaum to leave the room so that she and Eliza could have a real conversation. Weizenbaum was surprised by this, later saying that he did not realize that extremely short exposures to a relatively simple computer program could induce such powerful delusional thinking in some people. The ability of Eliza to trick some users into believing that it was human-like made it one of the first genuine attempts at the Turing test. The Turing test is a way to measure a machine's ability to exhibit intelligent behavior similar to or indistinguishable from that of a human. It was proposed by Alan Turing, the father of computer science in 1950. The test involves a human evaluator who engages in natural language conversations with both a machine and another human without knowing which is which. If the evaluator cannot reliably tell which is the machine and which is the human, then the machine is said to have passed the Turing test. Eliza attempted to pass the Turing test by simulating conversations with users. However, Eliza ultimately did not pass the Turing test for a few reasons. Firstly, it lacked genuine understanding. Eliza's responses were based on a simple pattern matching algorithm and not a true understanding of the meaning behind the user's input. Secondly, it had limited scope. Eliza's responses were constrained by the patterns and scripts pre-programmed into it. It couldn't handle a wide range of topics or respond dynamically to new or unexpected inputs. Thirdly, it engaged in superficial interactions. While Eliza could sometimes produce responses that seemed human-like on the surface, further conversation would quickly reveal its limitations and lack of genuine understanding. In essence, Eliza was a remarkable demonstration of early natural language processing techniques, but it fell short of passing the Turing test due to its inability to truly understand and engage in human-like conversation. Its simplicity and limitations are what made it fundamentally 
different from modern chatbots like ChatGPT. While Eliza was quite impressive, it wasn't a true artificial intelligence program like ChatGPT. Its most famous use as a digital psychotherapist was essentially it reflecting the user's input back to them in the form of a question. It did not engage in any real psychotherapy that could help improve the emotional state of patients like a trained professional psychotherapist would have done. ChatGPT, on the other hand, belongs to a newer generation of chatbots that are based on deep learning techniques using large-scale neural network models. ChatGPT is built upon the transformer architecture, which allows it to understand and generate human-like text based on vast amounts of training data. Unlike Eliza, ChatGPT doesn't rely on pre-programmed responses or keyword matching. Instead, it learns to generate responses by analyzing patterns in the data it's trained on. ChatGPT is capable of more nuanced and contextually appropriate responses compared to Eliza due to its ability to understand and generate natural language in a wider variety of contexts. When Eliza was first released, many academics believed that the program would be able to positively influence the lives of many people, particularly those with psychological logical issues and that it could aid doctors working with such patients. For its time, it was revolutionary and unlike anything else, it was an early indicator of how humans sought to have a deeper connection with machines beyond mechanical input and output. Thank you for watching.